Hi, this is Jeff Spencer, Math 120 instructor for the Community College of Denver, and this is our video lecture over section uh, 12.1, which is the beginning of our statistics unit, our last unit in this class, which is in chapter 12. So, um, we're going to introduce some terms about statistics, talk about sampling, frequency distribution, and some basic graphs that you should be able to read. So um, we're going to talk about what statistics is as a science. We're going to describe the population whose properties are to be analyzed. We're going to select appropriate sampling technique. We're going to organize and present data. So statistics is the is actually a you know a method of collecting, organizing, analyzing, interpret and, and interpreting data, as well as drawing conclusions based on the data. Methodology is divided into two main areas. Descriptive statistics is the first half of statistics where we collect the data, we organize the data, and we summarize and present the data. So we just take the data and try to organize it the best we can and present it. But then usually uh, statistics wouldn't be that useful if we just did that. So a lot of times we want to be able to make conclusions from that data. So that's the inferential side of statistics, where we look at that data and the presentations of it and the organization of it and go a little bit further. And usually uh, and we make decisions based off theorems and uh, really just theory of statistics, um, but really the conclusions are the important part of this inferential statistics side. So generally, you know, somebody comes up with a research objective and they want to figure out, uh, answer a question about research or social science or something. So this statistics process is a good way to make those decisions using data. So in uh, uh, statistics, we determine uh, what the population is first we're gonna it's, it's really the set containing all people or objects whose properties are to be described and analyzed by the data collector so the population is the group or things that we're trying to study sometimes it's people if it's social science sometimes it's objects it could be like cars or cells in a petri dish or something like that so it could be people or other things and we're going to study those things and that's the population that's the group that we're trying to learn about so usually in order to get information from that population, we collect what's called a sample. And a sample is just a subset of the population. And when we sample, we want to make sure that we have a representative sample, a sample that exhibits characteristics typical of those possessed by the target population. So we don't want to have bias in our sample and just uh, ask people with certain opinions about a political question that might they might lean one way or the other. So. Um, we want to get generally a representative sample, sometimes called a good cross-section of the population. Okay, so let's just look at an example where we're going to kind of talk about what the population and samples are. So it says a group of hotel owners, this is their research objective, a group of hotel owners in a large city decide to conduct a survey among citizens of the city to discover their opinions about casino gambling. Describe the population. Well, the population that they're doing research on is the citizens in the city. So they want to learn about citizens in the city, and they're going to ask them a question about casino gambling. So the population is the set of all citizens in the city. Uh, part B, it's, suge it's suggested to survey all, all the people. Uh, so somebody in the, in the, in the group suggests, suggests to survey all the people at six of the largest nightclubs in a city on a Saturday night about their opinion on casino gambling. Is this a good idea or a representative sample? No, generally this is probably not a good idea. The nightclub set, people who go out uh, and party at night, are more likely to have a positive attitude towards casino gambling than the general population. So this would not be a good representative sample that would probably have some bias. You might want to figure out a better way to sample people like going to grocery stores or uh, different public events. So a random sample, just to, to talk a little bit more about sample, a random sample is a sample obtained in such a way that every element of the population has an equal chance of being selected. So you can imagine like if you list everybody in the population and they get a number, and then it's like uh, having a random number generator pick the numbers, and then that's the people that you sample. Or kind of like in a small population, if you put everybody's name in a hat and you randomly selected names from the hat. So that's kind of how it works. Um, so let's see here. So we want to do this and they're saying which, which one is the best way to get this information about the citizens feelings on casino gambling. So we have a couple examples and then we'll kind of say if they're good ideas. So we could randomly survey people who live in the oceanfront condominiums in the city. 
So this one says many hotels lie at the ocean front and these people might object to the increased traffic and noise which may result to casinos being put there. So it also does not give each citizen in the city an equal chance. So that's not a good one. Which of the following is the best way to select a random sample to find out how the citizens feel? The next one is survey the first 200 people whose names appear in the city's telephone directory. Um, well, that's not a random sample. It might be a little bit better, but um, it does not give each citizen in the city an equal chance. So the third one, it says randomly select neighborhoods of the city and then randomly survey people within the selected neighborhoods. That's called cluster sampling. And yes, that gives a good chance that each citizen has about an equal chance of being selected. Okay, so that's sampling. And uh, one of the things you will be doing for me on uh, the discussions, assignments, and, and tests is putting together what's called a frequency distribution. So let's say we collect a, a set of numbers and we want to basically organize those numbers. This is the descriptive statistics part. So let's say we uh, construct a distribution, or we say we collect some data, and it says the, for the data of the age of maximum yearly growth for 35 boys. So basically, what age were they when they had their most, when they grew the most in one year? What age were they when they had the most growth? And so we found from 35 boys, 35 different ages where they grew the most in one year. So the way to organize this is there's not a big range of numbers here. And we can just list each individual number, 10 through 18, the ages, and then list the frequency. So if you see, there's one 10. Frequency just means a count. How many 11s do you have? So you would go through this list and check off the 11s. So it looks like there are one, two, so frequency two. How many 12s? One, two, three, four, five. So there's five 12s and you go through the list and basically write the frequency distribution like that. Remember when you write a frequency distribution, each column better be labeled. So this is the variable and this is the frequency. So then once we have the data organized, we can make conclusions from this. So it says, uh, here's some conclusions list. It says maximum growth for most subjects occurred between 12 and 15. As you can see, the higher numbers, most boys uh, had their maximum amount of growth between 12 and 15 because the frequencies are very high there. It says the number of boys who attain their maximum yearly age growth at a given age increases until 14 and decreases after that. So it's going up, 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 up until 14 and then starts to decrease. You can also see that 14 is the most popular year for the maximum growth. Okay, so let's look at another one. We're going to, another data set where we're going to create a frequency distribution. It says here are the statistic test scores for a class of 40 students. So we have 40 different test scores. Now with this, the test scores have a much wider range than 10 to 18, like the last group, okay? So this data set, if we're going to create into a frequency distribution, we want to clump the scores into intervals, or sometimes called classes or bins. So this one says, group the frequencies into classes that are meaningful for the data. Since letter grades are given based on 10-point ranges, let's use the classes from 40 to 49, 50 to 59, 60 to 69, and etc. by tens. And that's how the grades are determined. So, you know, 90 to 99 is an A, 80 to 89 is a B, 70 to 79 is a C, and so on. So we're going to group them that way instead of listing each individual one, which would not be that informative. So if you look, you go through, there are three scores in the 40s, six scores in the 50s, etc. So um, that would be a good way to group this. So not every frequency distribution is you just list each individual data value. We did that here because the range of values is pretty small. But when we have a bigger range of values and more diverse values, we want to club them together into classes or intervals. And the intervals should be equal width. That's a key thing. Try and make sure your intervals are equal width and there's no overlap between the intervals. Then we can take this data and make freq uh, a histogram. So his, this could be like the data, uh, the histogram from the data set of maximum growth. So remember there was one, one kid who had the maximum growth at 10. There were nine kids that had ma maximum growth at 14 and we can kind of see this data. We would call this data bell shape. Um, but that that's, gives you a good idea that most, most kids are having their maximum amount of growth say between 13 and 15. Frequency polygon just a, puts, a, puts a curve or a, a line above the, the histogram. 
And that's basically it for 12.1. We'll continue this unit uh, for the rest of chapter 12. We'll see you next time.